my name is Lillian. Um, right now, most of my work is... <coughs> oh, no, quiet. Uh, most of my work is uh, with the Artism Company. Um, I do, I um, facilitate the support group. I help run the Sunday social activities and I do um, lots of planning and stuff. Hey, Luke, quiet. You went to school all day. I enjoy doing theater in my spare time. I love the stage. Um, acting is fun for me. I'm a filmmaker and writer. I really love stories. I love reading and all kinds of stuff. And um, I enjoy writing stories and I found film to be a really cool way to write because I'm a very visual person. And so I've done adaptations and I've done um, original works. Uh, right now I'm working on a musical and I also write a lot of articles for my nonprofit um, that helps people with autism and I'm telling my story about autism, which seems to help a lot of people. So Lillian and Chloe have Asperger's, and um, through their diagnosis, we've had this really interesting journey. Um, we've started a nonprofit organization uh, together, servicing young adults with autism or Asperger profiles. Along that journey, we got the girls service dogs. I wanted a service dog for a while. I ended up really pressing for one when I moved out of state for school. It's sort of one of those things where like everything happens for a reason. When we first met, there was like this huge connection where there's a video of him just like rolling all over me. Like he knocked me to the floor and like wouldn't stop cuddling with me. And that was just like the first second of meeting him. But there was just like this instant connection when we first met and he's been attached to me ever since. <laughs> the reason I got him was because I was uh, moving out and I, um, when I have uh, sensory overload, I tend to freeze and I need an outside source to pull me out. And so because I was going out on my own, I thought a service dog would be able to do that so I wouldn't be stuck. Like it would help a little bit with meltdowns because he knows deep pressure therapy. And I have um, a weighted blanket that helps me self-regulate when I get overstimulated and stuff like that. And so I thought having him with me would um, be helpful in that kind of situation. But he's been helpful in more ways than I even thought. And he understands me um, where when I'm out and about and I'm like not focused on what, how my body is feeling and what's going through, he is. And he notices, oh, there's something upsetting you, and he'll he'll warn me, and that's really cool. And he um, he knows, like I I tell him, I need something um, when I'm feeling a certain way, and then he recognizes, oh, when you feel that way, I'm supposed to do this, and he'll just start doing it. When the girls were diagnosed with Asperger's, uh, it was a late diagnosis. It was they were 16. It was. Um, a lot of misdiagnosis, which is really common with girls. Uh, and so for us, getting that actual diagnosis was um, a good thing. It put a lot of things in perspective. It made a lot of things quiet. It made a lot of things make sense. Learning about autism has been an uh, interesting journey for, for me. It's been day to day. There's all kinds of things you learn and don't know and think you know and then don't know. And it took quite a while for my kids to be diagnosed, so we were just trying to figure out things to do to help them as people. Didn't know really that they had autism or Asperger's or anything. We just tried to work with whatever was going on in their lives and try to make things easier for them. So because we kept, we kept hitting walls of things that were working or kind of working or not working at all, it turned the whole spin on on how to help them by listening to them, which was a whole new concept. It wasn't coming at them and trying to change them and fix them and um, it was it was trying to 
listen to my girls and hear what they had to say. And when you do that deep listening, um, they're telling you way more than you realize. It's really nice having that companionship because I know um, affection and stuff like that is hard to get from people because I don't like skin on skin contact. I don't like um, a lot of that kind of stuff, but I can get that from a dog for that love and like I don't feel as lonely. So for the company we apply to, they won't give you a service like uh, seeing eye dogs. They don't train those, for example. Um, but they will do for autism. And they were able to uh, match a uh, dog and tasks with my needs. And then after that, you do a personality test. So you write down like the personality of a dog you're interested in and what your personality is. So they match you both with a dog that can give you the tasks you need and one that will match you with your personality and lifestyle. So for example, if you're someone who's not going to be out all the time, you'll get a dog that has less energy and doesn't need to be walked all the time and exercise all the time. And then if you're someone who's always doing sports, always running around, always doing stuff, you'll have a dog that needs to be exercised all the time and loves running around. Well, I get to take him everywhere. Everyone's like, thinks it's really cool that he can go to the movies and he can go to the mall and stuff like that. And I found him, he went to Disneyland with me and um, some of my friends. And I thought it was really funny that like all these little kids were at Disneyland, but they got like the biggest smile just seeing a dog. <laughs> like, that's like a commonplace occurrence, but they're like, a dog at Disneyland? What? <laughs> He's very playful and very friendly. Uh, people love to come up to me and talk to me about how pretty he is, uh, how cute he is, how fun he is, and that he loves to play with people. Yeah, I think the uh, service dogs for my daughters are, are really going to be helpful throughout their lives as they, as they get older. I think the dogs will be their companions and really help them out with everything they do. They, they get along well, they're a good companion, and they really help them with everything that they do. Since having the dogs and having them for a little while, I noticed that my daughters are spending more time doing activities and, and keeping even more busy than they were before. And they're more social. They have, they have a lot of friends that hang out with them and they have fun with the dogs and then they have friends with other dogs that get together and they, they have a good time. But I've noticed that they really do spend more time with activities than they did before they had the uh, service dogs. It does a lot of things. So first of all, I think it really, um, there, there's a comfort, a built-in friendship, there's built-in love. It's very lonely um, for a lot of um, these kids on the spectrum. And so there's a built-in friend, built-in um, love, and then it's also a conversation piece, so when they're out, it it's, it helps to be social um, because they have to go out, they have to take their dogs to the bathroom, they have to take their dogs with them wherever they go, and, and people want to talk to them. Um, so I think it helps socially, um, emotionally. Um, I think um, for my girls, it gave them a lot of extra strength to, to be out in the world more. Um, the world can be really painful. Um, there's a lot of things coming at them, sight, and colors, and smells, and sounds, and, and having, having that protection um, and comfort with them at all times it gives them the ability to be out in the world more.